Hello, so we're just going to talk briefly about how to set up your Halarctus trail camera and what the settings do. Um, this is ideal if you've just got it out of the box and you don't want to read the manual, uh, you can just have a watch through this and I'll explain things um, briefly. So um, I've got the camera here, I haven't got any batteries in here, it has got the batteries internally for the solar panel. You, it is recommended to put um, four non-rechargeable batteries in this compartment, especially if you um, want to leave it out for very long periods, especially over winter, for example, or in areas where it's not going to get as much sunlight and be very busy. But you can you can run it without those, but we do recommend using them. So I've got an SD card here that's going to get slotted into the bottom. So the face is up and then it just gets clicked into place and that's that in. So after that, I can now turn the camera to the setup mode. So it's got off, setup, on. I want setup uh, and mode. Obviously, on the first setup, it's going to ask you what language you want. Um, for this one, we obviously want English, and you can obviously also set the date and the time. So this, uh, on initial setup, is American format. So you've got uh, year, month, day, and then obviously you've got the time. You can, uh, as you can see here at the bottom, change this to what you want, day, month, year, and it will flip that for you straight away. So it depends on um, how you want that to be. So you use the left and right arrow buttons to move between the lines and then um, up and down to change each setting. I'm just gonna leave that as it is for the moment and that you press okay once you've set that. It will then prompt you to format the SD card um, that gets it ready for use in the camera. Um, I've already done it on this, on this one, but normally uh, on first use, it's worth doing that, especially if the card's been used in a different device. Once that's done, you'll be brought to the main screen. So it shows you the solar um, capacity battery, which is 75% and it says that there's no batteries internally in here. Um, this is also uh, gives you a live view in the camera. You can see the date at the bottom as well and the time. It tells you how many, much capacity it's got. Uh, this is on photo mode, so it's got the capacity for 4,598 photos currently um, and all that kind of stuff. I can quick switch to video mode by pressing this. So it says it's got on this current setting, one hour and eight minutes worth of video. So let's have a look at the settings. If you want to download the app where you can change the settings, there's a QR code here on the inside, but you can also, if you press this, you can scan this QR code on the camera itself using your phone, uh, which will take you to the app. Um, the app is called Wildlife Cam. So to get to the settings, we need to press this button at the top. First of all, that will take you to playback. It says there's no file here. There's no, no videos on this one yet. Um, if I press it again, it will take us to the um, settings. So these are separated out into four blocks. So I can cycle through them using up and down. So I want this to be on video mode. So um, to change a setting, you press OK, and then you can change it, and then press OK again, and that changes it. The PIR interval is how long the camera will wait after a trigger until it can be re-triggered. So let's say a fox walks into your frame, the camera takes a video, um, that video, say, let's say it's set to 20 seconds. This is the camera takes 20 seconds. The fox is still present in front of the camera. This setting determines how long the camera will wait regardless of any activity before it can be re-triggered. So 30 seconds here means, in our example there, the fox would be there, 20 second video, then the camera would wait another 30 seconds before it would be triggered. Um, so you can change that as you wish. Obviously a lower um, interval means you'll get more videos, you'll use the battery a little bit faster, you'll fill your SD card a little bit quicker. So it's a bit of a balance. Um, we normally recommend something in the region of uh, 10 to 30 seconds. It, it depends on the species you're after and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, PIR sensitivity. So this is set to default as medium. Um, it depends really what you're after. If you're after small animals like hedgehogs, you might want to consider putting that as high as they're small, not the quickest of animals as well. Um, generally, um, high is not a bad bet to start off with, but you can also try medium. If you find that your, your camera's triggering a little bit later than you like, uh, you can change that to high. Time-lapse, um, that is obviously, you've got time-lapse settings there if you want to use it for a time-lapse camera instead of just a standard trail camera. Uh, loop recording means if the SD card gets full, it will start overwriting the oldest files in order. So it'll always just continuously have um, the most recent files and, and loop around. The infrared LEDs, so you can um, have these, you can turn these down to medium or low if you're finding them too bright for where you've put the camera. And you can also turn them off if you actually don't need them on at all uh, as well. 
Uh, low battery at night. Um, so this uh, determines how the camera will behave if the battery runs too low. Um, this always impacts night footage first. So you can either have it to no shutting, which means that basically it won't work at night. It will just if it, it will just retain its battery for daylight uh, purposes, which uses a lot less uh, power. And um, uh, you can, or you can change it to no IR LEDs, which means it will still take a picture, but it won't use the LEDs, which take the power. Um, and that will mean um, uh, you just probably get black images. So uh, which is why the default is no shutting, but it depends on your, your uh, uh, scenario. Monitoring period. So this is a timer kind of thing. So you can say if you want this on, say, 7 p.m. till 6 a.m., this is how you can turn that on and off. There are two timer periods, so you can have two different times of the day. Um, they shouldn't overlap as well uh, because then that will not work. Um, I'm just going to turn that back off for the purpose of this. Um, side PIRs. So that is the, um, the portions of the sensor on the side of the camera. Um, if you just want everything to be dead central when it comes in. We don't recommend turning that off really, unless you are putting them in the camera in a very narrow channel or, or environment. Um, generally, you should leave that on. Frequency. Um, this is something that most people will never have to worry about. Leave it on 50 hertz. If you go into the USA, you might want it on 60 hertz. It's to do with the sync up of how electrical grids work. You don't really need to worry about that uh, in the UK or in Europe. Um, the next set of settings is the um, uh, image sizes and the photo kind of settings. So the first setting here is image size. Um, so there's lots of different options um, from two megapixel all the way to 46. Now highest doesn't normally necessarily mean best um, and lowest doesn't normally uh, mean best as well. The default is eight megapixels. Um, you can just kind of um, uh, experiment with that. Uh, we'd normally say these kind of settings will give you better quality images just because uh, all trail cameras uh, will use interpolation to boost the image sizes. Um, it's there if you want it, but yeah, the lower resolutions are always better. Picture number, um, you can have it take up to 10 photos per trigger event. So that means say something triggers the camera once, you can make it take up to 10 photos. So it'll go trigger one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can change that as you wish as well. Uh, the shutter speed as well, If you, uh, this is um, this controls how much light comes in, but also how much motion blur you might get. So sometimes you might want to experiment with this if you're getting too much motion blur. Uh, otherwise, leave it on the default. Video mode. Um, so this is what most people will probably be using. The default is 2K, but you can set it to 4K. The 30 stands for 30 frames per second as well. Um, so yeah, uh, 4K is going to give you the best quality. Uh, video length, you can uh, obviously change this as you want and um, it can give you up to two minutes video clips per uh, trigger event. Obviously just bear in mind that the longer your video clips, the quicker you'll run down the battery. So there's always a bit of a balance. You don't want to set it for two minutes if animals are wandering past and they're gone after six seconds. You might as well put 15, 20 second videos at most. But if you've got areas where they're staying around for a long time or, and coming in frequently, you might want to choose a longer video setting. Uh, and obviously you can choose to return the recording of the audio off too. Um, then these are kind of the uh, the default the, the general camera settings. So you can turn it to a default format your SD card, change the date and time. There's um, it it will tell you the AA battery power life uh, if you've got batteries installed. Obviously detecting that we haven't. Change the time format between 12 and 24 hours. Um, have the date stamp, the timestamp on the bottom of the images. The beep sound, as you can hear. You can turn that on and off if you'd like to, if you find it annoying, um, if you don't want that feedback. You can change the name of the camera uh, as well. So by default, they're all set to Halarctus, the name of the camera itself, but you can change that in here if you'd like to. You can password protect your camera as well. So um, if anyone steals it, God forbid, that you know they wouldn't be able to access the camera without the password. You can also set up a pin code to access via the app when you've set up that as well. So if you connect to it via the app, it would ask you to input a pin code before you can, can actually connect to it. Um, auto Wi-Fi off and power off. So auto Wi-Fi off is um, how long the camera will stay on when you're connected to Wi-Fi without any activity. I wouldn't change this beyond uh, two minutes really. You can put it three minutes if you want to. Um, one minute is, is maybe pushing it, so two minutes is about the sweet spot, and that just means that if you forget to disconnect properly, the camera will automatically disconnect itself and not waste the battery. 
if uh, auto power off this is if you leave the camera in setup mode and you don't slide it to off or on you forget to do that the camera will turn itself off after three minutes so you can change that in here as well i wouldn't recommend setting it to off because then that will drain your battery if you do forget um, but it will turn itself off automatically after the period of time here backlight for the camera as well so this is the backlight for the screen um, and you can set that to go off a little bit sooner or later if you need more time looking at the screen if this backlight does go off because it'll go off after one minute and the screen the, but the camera will still be on if you just press a button the battery the, the backlight will come back on as well uh, and version and firmware updates you don't need to do anything with that unless someone from nature spy tells you to do so um, and then once you've all set up you can either go back to the main screen by pressing this back button at the top. Don't worry if it says uh, camera there, it'll still be in video mode here, uh, but you can change it again if you'd like to. And then um, just slide the button to on and it will count down. And after that countdown's done, the camera will be armed and ready and you're away.